Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Then the eleven, meaning the eleven disciples, uh, went to Galilee on the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, meaning Jesus, the risen Lord, Jesus resurrected from the dead, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Please pray with me. Loving Father, uh, please be with us. Allow your Holy Spirit to pour down upon us as we consider what it means to fulfill this great commission that has been given to us by your Son and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, to go and to make disciples of the nations. It indeed is a daunting and a big task, a task too big for us to handle on our own. So I just pray that your Holy Spirit would empower us to live it out. And at this time, Lord, even though I am a broken and I am a sinful man, I pray that you would allow me to get out of the way so that your Holy Spirit can speak through me your words of hope, your words of peace, your words of challenge, challenging us all to grow, grow in the image and likeness of your Son and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, with that, may the words of my mouth and meditation of all of our hearts be found loving and acceptable to you. You are a rock and our redeemer. Jesus' is holy name we pray. Amen. The Chevy company put out a car called the Chevy Nova. And when they put it out, they noticed a really interesting trend. That here in the States, the sales were going pretty well, just as well as any other car. But in Mexico, the sales were awful. They were doing horribly in Mexico. Now, who here knows... I don't, I cannot speak Spanish. Who knows a little bit of Spanish or can speak it? Okay, okay, whoever can speak a little bit of Spanish is already smiling because I think they know where I'm going with this. The reason why it didn't sell is because what no va means in Spanish. On the count of three, let's translate it together. What does no va mean in, in Spanish? One, two, three. No go. Snap. Someone should have looked into that, right? Sometimes I wonder if Jesus looks down at this church and scratches his head and asks the question, why no va? Right? His last commandment, his parting words, his marching orders to us were to go and make disciples of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, te teaching them to do everything that he has commanded to us. Yet, often, we, myself included, look a little bit more like the first church of the frozen chosen, right? Than a world-transforming movement. Just take me for example. Whenever I come up here, I really do mean what I say when I pray, get, out of, get me out of the way and allow your words to speak through me. No matter how challenging a text is, I try to allow the Lord to challenge all of us through it, to apply it to our lives. But as soon as I va or go to the rest of my life, I tend to be a little bit timid. Do you know that sometimes I'm even afraid to tell people what I do for a living? Isn't that awful? Ah! Oh. Dave Scabuzzo is probably one of my favorite people in the whole world. And he used to be a district superintendent, and now he's a pastor at Strongsville United Methodist Church. And in his parting address as a district superintendent, he said that the only two institutions that do not change are cemeteries and churches doing their best impression of one. <laughs> I mentioned, um, isn't Dave hilarious? <laughs> I have a preacher in me for Dave, by the way. Um, but as I said before, today's rally day. And our theme for Rally Day is to go and make disciples. And as we come upon this theme and as we come upon this particular text where Jesus commands us, I want us to ask the question, why do we sometimes know why? 
What are the things that stop us from going and making disciples? Why is it that sometimes we like to do an impression of a cemetery? There are, of course, many ways to deal with this, but I think one of the biggest is our relationship to doubt. Doubting ourselves, doubting God, doubting our relationship with God. How we deal with those can determine whether we are a cemetery or a world-transforming movement. Who here doubts themselves whenever it comes to making disciples? We have some liars here today. <laughs> Who's worried about what if, what, what if I get asked the questions that I don't know the answer to? What if I say something wrong? What if I goof it up? Jesus knew that this would happen. As a matter of fact, there are even people in the Bible, people who made a lot of disciples that doubted themselves sometimes. Take Peter, for example. When Peter jumps out of the boat on the stormy sea and starts walking on the water towards Jesus, he does fine until he looks down. And once he takes his eyes off of Jesus and starts looking at himself having self-doubt, he begins to sink. Jesus addresses this in Luke chapter 12. In this, Jesus is telling his disciples not to worry. And one of the ways he tells them not to worry is he says, don't worry when, notice he doesn't say if, he says when, don't worry when you are brought before the rulers and teachers of the synagogues what you'll say or how to defend yourself. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what to say. The reality is that making disciples, that sharing our faith with others, is less about winning an argument, more about forming a relationship. More about inviting others into a relationship. And that invitation, the power behind that invitation, it doesn't come from us. It comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that we'll always have the right answers, or even have any answers at all. But in order for that relationship to be authentic, we need to be able to say, you know, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. And as Jesus implies here, we will find resistance when we go and make disciples. One of my biggest regrets in college was the only class that I ever dropped in my entire life. It was a philosophy class, and on the first day, the professor began railing about how silly it is to believe in God. Well, I, all of a sophomore in college, thought I'm going to defend my faith. Oh, boy, did it go bad. Some guy with a PhD against this little uh, kid, almost, a little older than kid, but not much, uh, that uh, is a sophomore in college. When I reflect upon that, two things come to mind. First of all, it was kind of immature for that professor to do that, I think, to uh, use his PhD to squash the faith of someone who doesn't even have an undergraduate degree. It'd be like me looking at Elijah, our one-year-old, and saying, hey, you want to race? <laughs> but second thing I realized is maybe God put him in my life not to dislodge my faith, but to challenge its shallowness. So often, God puts people in our lives asking questions or, or questions we have ourselves, not to dislodge our faith, but to call us to grow deeper. Doubt can enable us to grow deeper, both in our knowledge, but also in our love and appreciation for the Lord. See, very often, I think self-doubt is a problem of the head. We don't think we can do it. We don't think we can make disciples. So the truth is we can't without the power of the Holy Spirit. But then we begin to doubt God. That's oftentimes a problem of the heart. We don't think we can make disciples. If we doubt ourselves, if we begin to doubt of God, sometimes it's more a doubt of the heart. When Matthew recounts uh, Jesus' great, uh, the Great Commission, the gospel reading we just had, he says something very interesting beforehand. Jesus said, that, or Matthew writes, that when the disciples come to Jesus, some of them worship and others of them doubted. 
It's interesting. At least two reasons why it's very interesting. First of all, the doubters. They were there, weren't they? They did not hide behind their doubt. Instead, they allowed it to drive them to a deeper faith. They chased it down, so to speak. Right after Jesus was crucified, everyone was hiding. And when they heard that he had risen, those who doubted still went to check out the evidence. We live in a time and a place where it's really trendy to be uh, skeptical. There is this assumption that our doubt is more trustworthy than God. But you know, trust isn't a head issue, it's a heart issue, is it not? Why do we have such blind faith and doubt? Why not chase that doubt where it leads us? By the power of the Holy Spirit will lead us to the risen Lord. The second thing that I notice is that Jesus does not reject them. When he gives the commission, there isn't go and make disciples except for those of you who are doubting. I'm done with you, right? Jesus is addressing all 11 disciples, all the original uh, 12 of the seven of Judas, of course. He tells them all. And we all know the famous story, because that's on a group level, on an individual level. We know the famous story of Thomas. Right? It's a pretty doubting Thomas story. What I find interesting is that when Jesus meets Thomas, Jesus says, look at my hands, touch my side. In other words, if you doubt him, test him. He is up for the challenge. I can guarantee you that. What's even more amazing is Thomas's response. Thomas doesn't say, well, I still don't believe you. Instead, he falls to his knees and he says, my Lord and my God. You see, we don't hide behind our doubt, but instead of we chase it down, all over the step, <laughs> we chase it down, it will drive us to a deeper and more committed relationship with God. It will drive us to start realizing Jesus is all encompassing authority in our lives. This is what Jesus says um, right before he gives a great commission, right? All authority has been given to me. All authority on heaven and on earth. So all truth is God's truth. All authority is God's authority. This happened in my own life. I had um, some doubts about the resurrection of Christ, the physical resurrection. And I thought, well, rather than hiding behind him or running away, let me chase after him. I found a myriad of resources pointing towards the resurrection, the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ. I started to realize, maybe Jesus has authority over death after all. I began to realize that all authority is God's. All truth is God's truth. The only commandment Jesus gives in this entire passage is to make disciples. The word go could actually be translated as you are going. See, the life of discipleship and the life of going and making discipleship isn't compartmentalized. Church things here, and discipleship things here, and never the two shall meet. Instead, Jesus is saying, as you're going about your daily lives, make disciples. And as we go about our daily lives, we begin to realize that discipleship and making disciples for that matter is all about relationships. Right? About forming a relationship with others and inviting others into a relationship with God. But as we consider that, we begin to think, well, in order to invite people into a relationship with God, I have to be in a relationship with God. In order to make disciples, I have to be a disciple. You see, I think one of the reasons why we know Bob, one of the reasons why we don't go make disciples is because we do not want to be travel agents to a place we've never been to before. We don't want to tell people about being a disciple when we don't realize, or we don't know, we are a disciple. So that leads to a very practical question. What is a disciple? Literally, the word used here for disciple means learner or pupil, or follower. In other words, you don't have to have all the answers. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't be a disciple if you had all the answers, right? You're still learning. You are on a journey. 
and you're simply inviting others onto that journey with you. So, why should we walk? Why should we go and make disciples? We should go and make disciples because we're on a journey. A journey that compels us to go out and share the good news. The good news that turns self-doubt into reliance on the Holy Spirit's power in our lives. The good news that turns our doubts in God into a deeper trust in Him. The good news that Paul talks about. When he tells people that we start participating in Christ's ministry of reconciliation, he says, be reconciled to God first. That turns doubts in our own discipleship into a lifelong journey of telling and living out the greatest news ever told. News that is better, that is better than a cure for all mental illness, cancer, heart disease, the cure for every disease ever. It is better than that. It is the news that death itself has been defeated. It is the news that we no longer have to do an impression of a graveyard. Instead, you and I, we can go to an empty grave, the grave of God's Son, our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, who died and resurrected from the dead so that he could take away our sins so we could become righteous. He took away our emptiness so that we could be filled. He took away the sting of death so that in Him we could have a new life. Please pray with me. Gracious Lord, help us to go and make disciples of the world. Enable us to be reconciled back to you and then participate in that beautiful ministry of reconciliation, not making church members, not making church attendees, but instead making disciples so that we can transform the world with your love. We pray these things in the name of your Son and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If um, something in this service has touched your heart, Maybe something in this past week has come up. I want everyone to know that this the healing grill is open to everyone. We have uh, are starting a ministry called the Ministry of Presence. And these folks are uh, lay people that are going to come down and come up, come down and pray with you. They can pray silently, or if you want to share a prayer request with them, please share that or. They can just be present with you. To let you know that you don't go down this journey alone. And instead you do it with all of us. So please know uh, that that opportunity is available for anyone who feels so led and so far. Brothers and sisters in Christ, please receive this blessing and this benediction. Let us go forth, making disciples of Jesus Christ. So this world can be reconciled back to its loving creator. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you may go.